feel like in order to start blogging, I need to be really real. Part of that is to just be myself and be me. And by that, I mean like this. I'm obviously not wearing makeup right now. And I'm not one who wears makeup every day. One thing that's held me back from vlogging is feeling like I have to be just right. Like everything has to be perfect. I can't, I can't do that. And so if I'm going to start vlogging, I just need to be real with you guys. I feel like getting dressed and doing my hair and my makeup just for fun. I'm turning 30 soon and I've been feeling kind of yucky lately. I mean, it's winter. I don't have a car right now, so I'm stuck at home. So I just kind of feel blah. And I'm sure that a lot of you can relate to that. When you have kids and you're just going all day and you're taking care of people and you're at home, if you're a stay at home mom and there's like no reason to get up and, you know, put your makeup on, especially like I just don't like how makeup feels. I prefer not to wear makeup. It's like a constant battle. Do I want to put makeup on and look good? <laughs> or do I just want to let my skin breathe? So look, if I'm going to be doing this, then I just, I just got to lay it all out here. If you want to watch my vlog, this is what I'm going to look like. Today, I want to talk to you about my word of the year and my new year resolution, my non-resolution. I realize that I'm getting a late start on this because it's, what is today? The 13? I don't even know. I think today is the 13th. So I'm gonna take you with me. I'm gonna go get ready. I don't know if you've ever heard of the word of the year thing. It's been kind of popular in the last few years, so you probably have. For the past three or four years, I've picked a word of the year, and I really like this idea. I'm very much the kind of person who's like, it has to feel right, you know? Isn't my makeup beautiful? And so every year that I've done this, I wanted it to come very naturally, kind of organically through, like, my everyday life. The first year I did it, I picked the word, what was my word? Oh, it was grace. I mean, growing up in church, you hear these like catchphrases all the time and they kind of start to lose their meaning. I had never really thought about grace before and what grace really meant. I kind of picked the word unintentionally. I just started um, paying attention to it, really focusing on its meaning and it was making its way into a lot of my um, my journal entries, um, my blog posts, my Instagram posts, and it was like the spring time when I realized, hey, this is my word for the year. Then I started making a more conscious decision to focus on this word. I think the year after that, my word was joy and finding joy in all circumstances. One thing that really speaks to me that I just, I like to think about when things are kind of hard is the apostles. You know, these guys did not have easy lives. Following Jesus was not easy. They were uh, persecuted, yet in their letters, they talk about joy. One thing I tell myself a lot is, you know, joy isn't, it's not an emotion, it's a heart state. And if these men could find joy in their circumstances, then certainly I can find joy in mine because I have pretty good circumstances. Going through loss and, and torment, and these men still able to say that they have joy. I just think it's really um, inspiring and just really, really cool for lack of a better, more philosophical uh, analysis <laughs> of the state of joy. So, <coughs> so after joy, my word was gratefulness and that followed up with joy really well. Like it really went hand in hand. It happened very naturally. Oh my gosh, I'm like <coughs> having a hard time feeling joyful right now while I'm breathing in face powder. What kind of eyes should I do? I'm not going anywhere today. I don't have to impress anybody but myself. Let's see, I think I'm gonna do this for right here. I'm just gonna put a little eyeliner. Obviously, don't take makeup tips from me because I have no idea what I'm doing. I just do what looks good. So, okay, so then last year, oh, so I guess this is my fifth year doing it. My word was imperfection. And that, oh my gosh, that was actually such a cool word to pick. And I really, really focused on it all year. It actually made an impact on my life and what I was doing. I feel like imperfection is a good word for anyone to embrace simply because you're human. You don't have a choice. You are imperfect. Oh no, I'm getting so I hear the child. Hi, baby. Where's my going? Nowhere, I'm just putting makeup on. See, she thinks we're going somewhere because I'm putting makeup on. I have learned, learned that it's actually really hard to do your makeup and talk at the same time. I think I'm done. What a difference, right? I wish I enjoyed wearing makeup. I do like it, like it's fun to do makeup every once in a while, but I wish that I enjoyed putting it on every day. And I look in the mirror and I'm like, girl, mm-hmm. So when I chose the word imperfection for 2017, what I realized is that it really 
makes you figure out what your priorities are. Because if I'm embracing imperfection, then I have to choose to not feel guilty about things. And motherhood just comes with guilt. You can feel guilty about everything. Oh my gosh, like I could feel guilty about the laundry that I haven't done. Do I feel guilty? No, not anymore. I might have a couple of years ago. You feel guilty about the way you put your kid to sleep. You're guilty about the way you feed your kid. How often you go outside. How often you don't go outside. Your kid not having a great teacher. Take the pettiest thing in the world. Oh, you could feel guilty about your children wearing socks that do not match. The point is you could feel guilty about anything in parenting, like practically anything. If you're embracing the word imperfection, you can't feel guilty about being imperfect. When you choose to not feel guilty, and it is a choice, a conscious decision that you make every day, every moment that that twinge of guilt comes up that you're not doing something perfect as a mother, you have to be able to push it aside. But then there's some things that just stick with you and you just feel in your heart that you want to do better than that. It's totally okay to have those things that you're like, mm, no, I really need to change this about motherhood. But that's what I'm talking about. That's when you start realizing what your priorities are. And for me, one of the things that I choose not to feel guilty about is not folding my kids clothes. Don't freak out. You know why? Because it takes like 50% longer to fold their clothes nice and neat. And then do you know what happens? They change their clothes four times a day and they're like stuffed in their drawers and they never look nice. Do my kids need perfect drawers? No. I'm gonna go do my hair and when I come back, I'm gonna look fabulous. Another thing that I don't feel guilty about. I do not feel guilty about going to McDonald's every once in a while to feed my kids, especially on a hard day, especially when we are out running a billion errands and I'm just done. And that's not to say that my children's health isn't a priority, but like, hi. in, you wanna say hi? <laughs> See her pretty lipstick? Oh my goodness, you're so pretty. Obviously I care about the health of my children. The food that I buy to keep at home, like 95% of it, is healthy. Why the heck should I feel guilty? If I'm having a really, really hard week and I buy McDonald's chicken nuggets three times in one week, should I feel guilty about that? Why? When you switch your energy from feeling guilty about these things that don't really matter, everyone has like their own thing. You may not ever, ever want your children to eat McDonald's. Meanwhile, you may not care if your living room looks comfortably lived in. You may not care about piles of things in places. And that's also, are you okay? And that's also totally fine. What I learned is that having a really tidy house is actually very, very important to me. What I discovered is that when my house isn't tidy and clean, I get super stressed out and grumpy and I can't parent very well. As long as the living room and the dining room are very, very tidy and organized, the laundry may pile up, don't look under my bed, but the living room and dining room need to be clean. By choosing the word imperfection, I was able to figure out what my priorities are. It was very helpful just overall in parenting and choosing to throw away the guilt and to focus on things that are important instead of wasting that energy on guilt. I see so many moms feeling guilty about leaving their kids to go like drink coffee and go, I don't know, like shopping at the mall. Why are you feeling guilty about that? You are a human. You work your butt off all week long with your children. And if you work outside the home, oh my gosh, like you go to work and then you come home and you work some more. Don't feel guilty about taking some time to yourself and like taking care of you. You can't pour from an empty cup. You have to take a chill pill every once in a while. Here's my word for this year. And at the same time, here's my new year's resolution. My word of the year is heaven. To add to that, my phrase of the year is to be heavenly focused. But I really want that to mean for me. As a Christian, I want my life to turn to God. I want my eyes to be focused on Him all the time. And this is kind of piggybacking off of my word imperfection because yes, while I'm human and I'm imperfect, I need to be less focused on me and I need to be more focused on what God wants. What does God want for my family? What does God want for my kids? What does God want for our eating habits, our routine, our homeschool, our money choices? Everything that we do should be focused on his glory and pleasing him with our lives. And so I decided <laughs> not to make any New Year's resolutions. Technically that is my New Year's resolution. For everything that I choose to do in my life this year, for my goal to be heaven. So what I wanna know is do you have a word? If you do have a word, I wanna know what it is. And I want you to tell me what that means to you. What your plan is to be focused on that and what your goals are for this year. And also the other thing, I don't want you to feel guilty anymore, okay? Stop it. All right, thanks for watching. Let me know what your word is this year.